Dear brothers and sisters in our Lord, we are standing here in the closure of a year and we would very much like to hear from the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we may come to your throne. We submit ourselves under your authority and we declare that you are our King and God. We would like to hear from you and get a word of inspiration and encouragement for this new year to come from you. Thank you that we may look forward. Please guide us through your spirit as we read and think upon your word. In Jesus' name, Amen. 2020 has been a year that turned out quite differently than what we expected. What a year full of turmoil and many challenges it has been. A new strain of coronavirus escaped from a lab in China and a worldwide pandemic was declared. Our health and circumstances were much affected. People got challenged in various ways. Some got disheartened and even frustrated with some of the regulations. In the USA, there was a big election. Claims of irregularities and fraud were made and there is an ongoing battle between two sides. Many say that the integrity of the whole voting system there is at stake. In our own country, we have testimonies of corruption and abuses of power on government level. One senses that a lot behind the scenes are happening and that there is a playoff between good and evil. It seems that the battle has intensified and we as God's children would like to know where this is going and what hope there may be in our outlook on 2021. We would like to go to God's word and look for hope and inspiration. Maybe the first bit of comfort we will find is that the Bible tells us that there is indeed a spiritual battle going on. We as God's children should not be ignorant of this. As early as in Genesis 3, we are told about this battle. God spoke to the serpent who is a symbol of Satan. Genesis 3 verse 15 we read, And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. We know that this prophecy was eventually pointing forward to Jesus Christ the Messiah who was to come. We think immediately of how Jesus on the cross conquered Satan, while Satan came against Jesus and his ministry to harm him. But we need to see that the battle also involves us as mankind, who are the offspring from the woman as well. We may ask whether we may see all the conflict in the world ultimately as rooted in this. There is an ongoing battle between the forces of evil and mankind. Shouldn't we see all the bad stuff happening all around us in the realm of this world as 
a reflection of a battle in the spiritual realm. That is what Paul tells us in Ephesians 6. The question now is why the struggle still continues if Jesus has already conquered the enemy on the cross. Jesus indeed conquered Satan and Jesus told us that he was given all authority in heaven and earth to rule in God's kingdom. People from all nations may now come into God's kingdom and be reconciled to God through Jesus. God also grants us his children authority to fight and conquer in this battle because even though the foe is defeated, he is not removed yet. That's why Peter tells us in 1 Peter 5 verse 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. But Peter doesn't tell us that to scare us or to suggest that we should run away. He immediately follows it up with verse 9. Resist him, that's the devil, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. We need to continue steadfast in our faith. We are being tested. We need to fight by submitting ourselves under God's authority, then resist and fight the enemy. Paul also confirms this battle when he tells Timothy in 2 Timothy 3 verse 12. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But Paul gives us instructions on what to do in this battle. He writes to the Ephesians 6 verse 11, Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Why do we need that? Because there is an unseen spiritual battle going on in the heavenlies and the turmoil and challenges that we see may be a reflection of this battle. Paul tells us then in verse 12, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. But of course, Paul tells us to participate in this battle and then describes our protective gear as well as our weapon of attack. One cannot help to note that there is no protection given to cover our backs with this armor. Maybe that would suggest to us that we dare not turn around and run away. We need to stand firm and fight. Besides a variety of protective gear, Paul also mentions a weapon. Verse 17, the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. Maybe the question would come to mind, what does it mean to conquer with the Word of God? One would surely be able to give a multifaceted answer from the Bible, but today and for encouragement and inspiration for 2021, I would like to specifically 
take us to Revelation 19. I'm reading from verse 11 till 16. Now I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now. Out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treats the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God, and he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings, and Lord of Lords. Some would think that this passage describes the return of the Lord Jesus and describes a battle at His second coming. But I would like to suggest to you that this image rather describes our spiritual battle now, which eventually will lead to the return of Christ and the final proclamation of victory and judgment, which is described in the following verses from the 17 till 21. You may ask me, but how can we say that? Well, let's look a bit closer. Firstly, everywhere in the Bible where the return of Jesus is described he never rides on a horse. Acts 1 verse 11 Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. People riding horses in the Bible are a symbol of armed forces in battle. Revelation is an apocalyptic book that makes a lot use of symbols. Can we say that warfare here is the warfare that Christ does through His Church in the current age? Jesus here is portrayed as the Word of God. This is one of many titles which can be used for Jesus, like He is Emmanuel, that is God with us, or He is Prince of Peace, He is Wonderful Counselor, etc. We have said that Christ is here portrayed as the Word of God. It is the Word of God that is conquering the nations here and a sword is going forth from his mouth. Note, the sword is not in his hand. What would normally come out of one's mouth? It is your words. Remember Ephesians 6 verse 17, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. A note here is uh, that the Greek word used for word is rhema, not logos. Rhema means the spoken word, the word which is spoken. We also have this image in Hebrews in chapter 4 verse 12. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. 
the idea that comes forth from these metaphors is that godly words spoken are acting as a weapon, not physically. These words appeal to the hearts and minds of people. Christ's words strike people in their consciences like a sword when they hear it. We find this kind of language elsewhere in the Bible as well. God speaks, for instance, to Hosea about Judah and Israel. And this is what he said in Hosea 6 verse 5. Therefore, I have hewn them by the prophets. I have slain them by the words of my mouth. Of course, it doesn't mean that God slayed or hewed the people physically himself, but through God's words, which the prophets had spoken, the people were slain. In the same way, we may say that the words that Jesus spoke through the church, the body of Christ, slay. These words are slaying people are conquering people, even though in the image the scenes look like a real war or battlefield with slaughtered enemy. If it were a physical battle and bodies lying are lying around. But the image may actually portray something very positive. Let's now look at similar language in another picture that we found in Zechariah 10 verse 3. My anger is kindled against the shepherds, and I will punish the goatherds, for the Lord of hosts will visit his flock, the house of Judah, and will make them as his royal horse in battle. God is saying that He would use His people, that He would ride upon them as His royal horse in battle. And even though this may point to a different event in history, the principle is still the same. In the vision of our Revelation 19 text, John saw Jesus as the Word riding on a horse throughout the world, conquering the nations. Following the Word are some angels. They are spiritual forces in the heavenlies with Him. Can it be that the church is the white horse on which Christ Rights. Can it be that the image portrays the gospel going out to all the nations? Conquering the nations by the word is bringing them over into God's kingdom, winning them over, making friends from these enemies. This is how Satan's kingdom gets defeated. Ultimately, at the end of this time, Christ will return and that will bring the final defeat of Satan's kingdom. We read about this in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 24 to 26. Then comes the end when He delivers the kingdom to God, the Father, when He puts an end to all rule and all authority and power. For He must reign till He has put all enemies under His feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. When Paul says Christ must reign, until he put all enemies under his feet. He speaks of 
the time now when Christ is ruling through us, His church. Enemies are Gentiles to be brought over to become God's friends, to be reconciled with Him. When this time has passed, Christ will return and will also deal with Satan and with Satan's instruments and even with death itself. And those who resisted the gospel will also be consumed by the brightness of His coming. They will be judged. For now, it means that we may realize the Bible acknowledges and inf informs us that there is a battle going on. The devil and his forces are at work to mislead people and to come against God's people. The battle may sometimes be more severe than at other times, but this this we may know. Jesus has conquered the enemy. He grants us His authority on His terms. We are to use it and not retire from battle. Christ would like to ride on us, on us, His church, to conquer the nations. We speak His words, we go forth, we persevere in battle. Let us enter 2021 being God's battle horse, His white horse. We are standing firm with God's armor. We go forth speaking the word while praying in the spirit. The enemy may use viruses and evil political agendas, but we stand against it and conquer the people in God's way. That is what he wants. Let's honor him, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Let us pray that God may grant us His grace and power. Father, thank You that we may look up unto You, that we may trust You entering this new year. We would like You to fight the battle through us. We would like to be your white horse and be driven by you and resist the enemy, come against the evil forces against us. And when people are coming towards us, we would like to win them over with your gospel. We would like to fight this battle, please grant us your power and your presence. Please equip us with your Holy Spirit and with you we are entering this new year. Only with you, in you, we have also conquered. In you, we live a victorious life and we look forward and we trust you. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your abundant life. In Jesus, our King, the conqueror on the white horse, which is us. Amen. May you experience God's goodness and favor in 2021. Yes, fire in his eyes and a sword from his 
now and he's riding a white horse across this land he has fire in his eyes and a sword in his mouth and he's riding a white horse across this land and he's calling out to you and me, will you ride?